Hi, welcome back. Let's continue with our cloud journey. Before we start, let's review what we've learned so far. A cloud service is a container in which you can put web roles and worker roles. And for each of the roles, you can have multiple instances. Each instance corresponds to a virtual machine running on Windows Azure Data Center. The row instances are put behind load balancers, and then they can communicate with each other in different ways. And in previous episodes, we also met row entry class and its on start and run method. We said that this class is optional for web roles, but mandatory for worker roles, and on start method is called before the run method. That's what we know so far. Okay, now we are ready for today's new concept, the startup task. To simply put, a startup task is a Windows process your virtual machine launches before it starts your role instance. There are three task types, simple, background, and foreground. For a simple task, system waits for the task to exit before any other tasks can be launched. For background task, system doesn't wait the task to exit. Foreground tasks are similar to background tasks, except the row is not restarted until all foreground tasks exit. The task can be any Windows executable or a batch script. And startup tasks can be launched with either limited privilege or administrative privilege. And the easiest way to understand a startup task is to see it in action. Let's jump to Visual Studio. Now we are back to Visual Studio. Let me create a new cloud project with one worker role in it. I'll go to File, New, Project, Cloud, OK, then add a worker role. Now let's say I want a simple startup task. In this case, I will make a simple console application and set it up as my startup task. To do that, I'm going to add a new console application into my solution. Right click on my solution, add new project, Windows console application. Say OK. What I want to do now is to deploy this application along with my worker roles and set it up as the startup task of my worker role. And I will do this by simply including the console application binary into my worker role. I will build the solution first. Then I go to my worker role. We'll say add existing item. I will navigate back to my console application folder. I'm using debug profile. And you find the executable. I don't care about configuration file in this case. I just add. And then I will click on the console application one.exe, right click, bring up properties, and set it to uh, copy always to my output folder. And I will go back to my console application, right click, and properties, build events. I'm going to copy the binary over to my worker role after each build. So to automate this just a little bit. I will say copy macros. I will use the target path. Then copy to my uh, solution folder. Just double check. And work uh, row one bin. Then my configuration name. 
So that's the command to copy my executable over to my worker role output folder. I say OK. And just to make sure everything is working, rebuild the solution. OK, it's good. Now let's see how do I configure this executable as my startup task. Uh, to do that, uh, I will double click on my service definition file. And here I will modify the XML directly to include startup tasks. The schema is really uh, straightforward. Basically, I need to add a um, startup element. And then I say task. In this case, my command line will be uh, simply calling to the console application one exe, and I will set it as simple for now. So that's my startup task. Before we give it a try, uh, let's do something outrageous in the console application so we can easily spot that the startup task is actually invoked. Let's go back to the console application. Let's see uh, what do we do here. Um, here I will just launch the calculator program so we can have an easy visual indication that the startup task is running. Of course, this is not what you want to do in your production code. Here we are just trying to get a simple indication that startup task is actually running. So let's do this. I will say process equals result this start calculator. Uh, you can see here I'm making an assumption here. Uh, I'm assuming a calculator executable is actually uh, installed is and is actually in the system path variable. But you get the idea. Then I will simply say process wait for exit okay that's our startup task and now um, let's make sure the compute emulator is running let me bring up the compute emulator UI so we can see what's going on with our worker role and I will lay out my Visual Studio to the left and before we start, let's do one last thing. Let's modify the worker role. We just modify the text a little bit so we can have an easy uh, indication the worker role is started. Let's just print out a line on the console. Now we are ready to start. You can see our calculator is launched. This is our startup task. And because the task is a simple task, which means our worker role will not start until this calculator exits. Let's observe the console window. You can see the start me onstart method is not called. Now let me close the calculator. Now the startup task exits. And let's see the worker role. Now the role is started. And you can see our uh, startup line is called. Then the worker row enters the normal working state. So this is a very simple example of a startup task. Um, again, here we are doing something outrageous. So we can have an easy visual indication of what's going on. And now let's discuss why you actually need a startup task in your cloud services. So uh, why startup tasks? Uh, startup tasks are designed mainly for two purposes. Uh, first, it allows you to customize your, your virtual machines. Whenever you start a new virtual machine to host your worker role or web role, you get a pretty uh, standard uh, virtual machine image. And if you want to do some custom settings, uh, you can use startup tasks. For instance, uh, you can register a COM component you can modify your registry settings 
you can install a third-party tool or libraries, uh, things like that. Uh, of course, if you want to modify the registry or if you want to install something, you need to uh, run your startup task in the elevated mode, uh, which I will show you in a moment. And the other purpose of startup tasks is to allow you to host any third-party uh, Windows processes uh, by yourself. Uh, let's say you have a legacy or a third-party component, uh, which can be a standalone Windows application or a service or a script. Uh, you can actually set it up as a background a startup task so that it launches along with your role and it can handle traffic as needed. Of course, if you want additional heavy customization of your virtual machines, uh, probably uh, you want to use Windows Azure uh, infrastructure as a service offering and create virtual machine images and host those images on Windows Azure. And virtual machines are out of scope of this series. Uh, for now, let's just go back to Visual Studio and have a little more fun with startup tasks. We're back in Visual Studio. Uh, let me maximize it so we can have more space. Let's go back to the service definition file. And here, let's say my console application needs to run under an administrative privilege because I want to modify, uh, for instance, my registries. Uh, here, I would just simply say uh, execution context. Uh, by default, uh, it's set to limited, which means the process will be launched uh, with the same privilege of your role instance uh, privilege. But if you set it to elevated, uh, this startup task will be launched uh, with administrative privilege. Note that uh, here when you say elevated, you are elevating the startup task. You are not elevating the worker role itself. And the second thing I want to show you is that you can actually have multiple startup tasks. Uh, for instance, let me just make a copy of this. Now I have two startup tasks. For simple tasks, uh, the system will run the tasks uh, in sequence of uh, how they are defined in the service definition file. In this case, the system will wait the first calculator to exit, then the second calculator to exit, then it launches the, the worker role. Let's give it a, a quick try. Let's say start. That's the first task. That's the second task. Then the worker role starts. And as we just mentioned, you can set up different task types. Uh, let's say uh, for here, I will change the second calculator to a background process so that it doesn't stop the worker role from starting. Let's launch this again. So the first one is a simple task. So it's blocking the worker role from starting. I exit that. And that's the second calculator. But you can see my uh, worker role instance is already in the running state and my calculator is still running. And the last thing I want to show here is the return value of the startup task. If the startup task returns any value other than zero, it's considered failed. And in the case of a simple task, because the startup task fails, uh, it will stop your worker role from starting. Uh, here, let's quickly modify the main method. Let's say uh, we are returning the integer. And here, I will just say return one. In this case, because it returns a non-zero value, the task is considered failed, and it will stop the task chain from executing. Of course, uh, there are a lot more to learn about startup tasks, but for the sake of time, uh, that's as far as we'd go in this episode. With that, it's time for us to dig a little deeper into real life cycle and have a peek of what is exactly happening on the virtual machine. I don't want to expose too much details to make the episode too hard to understand. On the other hand, I want to give you enough details so you can have a solid grasp of what is actually happening. You might never need to know what I'm about to say, but knowing these details can be handy when you find yourself in the situation when you want to uh, have fine tuning of your role life cycles. So let's start. 
Uh, first, uh, let's look at the worker roles, uh, which is easier to explain. After a virtual machine is configured, a W host bootstrapper process is launched. We don't need to care how this process is launched. Uh, we just take for granted that this W host bootstrapper will be started once your virtual machine starts. In the case of a worker role, the first thing W host bootstrapper will do is to look and execute your startup tasks. Once all the startup tasks are executed, W host bootstrapper will start a new process called W worker host. And then it will look for the assemblies which implement the row entry point class. That's where the connection is made. So you implement your row entry point class in your assembly, and this assembly will be found and will be loaded into memory, and the onStart method will be called, then the run method will be called. The web rule is a little more complicated because usually your website is hosted on IIS. So here, the WA host bootstrapper needs to talk to IIS and configure IIS to host the web role as well. So in addition to startup tasks, it will launch another process called IIS configurator, which will configure your IIS website, uh, application pools, etc., so that your web role can be hosted on IIS. And then the startup tasks are called. And finally, the W host bootstrapper will start another process called WIS host. And this is where your row entry point uh, implementation is found and loaded into memory. And then as the web requests are coming in, the Euro SP9 pipeline is invoked. I remember we said that for web row, uh, the row entry point implementation is optional uh, because you can see the this uh, class is actually hosted on a separate process and it doesn't matter uh, if you don't have the implementation because the IIS pipeline is still in place to host your web role. Okay, uh, that's a quick overview of worker role and web role lab cycles. And if you want to know more information, uh, of course, you can always look up uh, windowsedger.com or MSDN uh, to learn more about the lab cycles. So in summary, today we learned about uh, startup tasks and we looked into row lab cycles in more details. And uh, this is the end of the fundamentals part of the series. Uh, what are we going to do next is to uh, start an uh, actual uh, cloud service project, uh, which is uh, Azure Trivia. Azure Trivia is an online multiplayer question and answer game where you can learn about Windows Azure and test your Windows Azure knowledge by going through exercises or go against your friend to see who can answer the most questions correctly or uh, go into tournaments and to compete with all the players around the world. Uh, we will not start uh, from scratch. Uh, instead, uh, we will start with a working set uh, which supports the single user mode only. And throughout the rest of the series, we extend the application into a real online multiplayer game. So this is the plan for upcoming episodes. Uh, keep tuned, and I'll see you next time.